Since 1977, Mickey Miller has served in law enforcement in some capacity. In Nashville, he was best known for his work on cold cases before moving to Hendersonville to lead the department. As his chapter as chief comes to a close, we take a look back at his long and distinguished career in public service. Almost half a century later, one police chief's watch is now over. You know, I, I think everybody knows uh, when it's time, you just kind of feel it. And I'd always heard that, and I, I believe it's, it's true. I'm Hendersonville's very own Mickey Miller crosses the bridge into retirement. You know, when you've been doing uh, this as long as I have, it's, it's very difficult to, um, to just to, to let go. 47 years to be exact, a dream realized when he was just a young boy. My dad used to ride me on his uh, police Harley through the neighborhood before he'd go to work. Miller grew up in a police family. His dad, two uncles, and great-grandfather all served in Nashville. Years later, he'd do the same, motivated by passion and justice. When you go out and you talk to a family member after their loved one's been killed, um, it's, it's, uh, if, if it doesn't touch your heart, there's something wrong with you. While working in Metro, Miller specialized in homicides and cold cases, some of which still stick with him today, like Marsha Trimble. I think Nashville lost its innocence that day. The nine-year-old was delivering Girl Scout cookies when she disappeared. Her body was found a month later in a garage nearby. I think the brutality of it uh, stands out in my mind more than anything. The case would go unsolved for decades, becoming one of Nashville's most mysterious murder cases. Miller was one of the many investigators that tirelessly worked on that case. Child's life is cut off that early. Uh, you, you have to think, you know, what, what could they have become had they have been allowed to live? The 33-year veteran in Metro would eventually take his talents to Hendersonville in 2010. This is the greatest group of people you've ever seen in your life that I was able to work with. From license plate readers to community-driven crime-fighting initiatives, Miller's proud of what the department has accomplished under his leadership. We can drive through a neighborhood all day long and we see a car in a drive and we don't know if it belongs there or not, but your neighbor uh, might do that. And Despite advancements in technology, he says the streets are more dangerous today than when he started. You have to be aware now when you pull up to a gas station or uh, go to the mall. The biggest threat, young people. I think, I think juveniles are probably the most dangerous problem we have right now. They can't rationalize the, um, the seriousness of what they're doing, of taking a life or uh, robbing people. Miller has worked with legislators to change laws to allow for juvenile judges to offer harsher penalties for juvenile crime. It's not about rehabilitation. Um, these kids are robbing you and putting a gun in your face and shooting you. Uh, it's past that, and so it's about punishing them. Above all, Miller says Hendersonville is in good hands, not because of who's leading the department, but because of who they serve. And they're really the, the heroes of, of what we've been able to do here. It's because of the community as a whole. Assistant Police Chief Jim Jones will now lead the city as Hendersonville's sixth police chief, but those closest to Miller argue he won't be too far away. Reporting in Hendersonville, Blake Eason, News 2.